everybody. I'm Carolyn Berlin. I'm going to share my screen with you and we can get started. Okay. Um, my presentation today is about NEDP coaching. I'm Carolyn Berlin. Um, I'm a, the intake assessment specialist and an instructor for um, Howard County Library Systems Project Literacy. Our, it's a small program, but um, I'm really excited about um, our NEDP coaching program and I really wanna share it with you. Okay, so my objectives today, I'm gonna give you just, a pro I promise, a short history of our coaching program and how we got where we are. I'll define the role of an NEDP coach and describe how we coach our students. Um, and as Ellen said, if you have any questions throughout, please put it in the chat box. And Ellen, um, please interrupt if um, you want to with questions, okay? Okay, um, first of all, what is an NEDP coach? In our program, we have two groups of students that get that get one on one attention. One is um, a group of students that don't succeed in classrooms and our director usually assigns them a tutor. Those are people that sometimes are really elderly, sometimes are really low literacy, but they get one on one tutors. The other group are our NEDP students. Um, so if you are an NEDP coach, your student is a student that's already in the general assessment phase of the NEDP or in the diagnostic phase. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, and then the role of the coaches is to support their students and help them navigate through the complex NEDP. I'm sure you'll all agree that the NEDP is really complex. And, um, one of the things to remember is we're coaches and not assessors. There are many things that assessors are not allowed to do, but coaches can do. Sorry about the dog barking. <laughs> so um, how many of you have a, a coaching program in your program? Can you go ahead and put that in the chat box? Yeah, thank you. thanks, Ellen. It wasn't Amazon delivery. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to move on. So here's how we developed our coaching program. For a long time, we did not have an NEDP program of our own. Um, Howard Community College would send us students that were struggling in their program, and we would assign them a tutor or a coach. Um, sometimes we got students that were having trouble um, passing the the entrance exams, so we'd give them a tutor. Sometimes we'd get students that were having trouble in the general assessments and um, Emma would assign a coach. I had one student, this was a few years ago, who um, she was Spanish speaking and she couldn't write the essay for the um, Miranda rights. So once she was my student and I was her coach, I could work with her in writing and then she was able to pass that. Um, in our history, since two, the year 2000, we've helped about 150 students get their high school diplomas. Um, and that was before we had our own program. And why have a, two, a coaching program? Well, in that history of 150 students in, since the year 2000, I think Emma said we only had two that didn't finish. And we find that one of the most important things about getting somebody all the way through the program is developing a personal relationship. Um, if you have a personal relationship with your student, it, they are so much more likely to complete the program uh, for a whole host of reasons. One of them being they don't want to disappoint us as well as everyone else. But anyway, that's why we have um, a coaching program. Okay, um, the, the role of the NEDP coach, number one is to help with organization. And I'll say this, and um, I can say it probably with every slide, but the students we get in the NEDP program are students that didn't get a high school diploma for a reason. Um, and often that reason is they can't organize things. Um, 
you also need to be a cheerleader for your students. Um, I can't tell you how many times I have to, to, when a student's feeling frustrated, I stop, I step back and say, just look at where you've come from. Look how far you've come. You know, you've gotten all this done. You've, you've um, learned how to use the computer. You've learned how to share your screen. Anyway, being a cheerleader is a, a, a huge part of the role of an NDP coach. Focusing your student. We um, focus from, you know, meta to mega to um, major to minor, whatever. Um, sometimes you just have to remind them what's important. You need, you need this high school diploma to get a better job. And sometimes focus means, did you answer both parts of that question? But focusing our students is something I feel like I do all the time. I also think that we break down the tasks so that they're more manageable. When, when an assessor opens up a section, it's overwhelming to a lot of students. That health section, my gosh, it's huge. So um, I feel like we take it in small bites and they work their way through it. And um, it makes it a lot more manageable. And probably the biggest role for an NEDP coach is to form a relationship with their student. Like I said, we found that um, if, if we have a relationship with our students, they, they finish, they complete their, their uh, NADP. There are students I know out there that can completely do this individually, don't need help, but I think there's a lot of them out there that like to have their hand held and, and just, just be encouraged. Um, okay, let's see, sorry. Some of my recommendations for being an NEDP coach, sorry, um, we schedule a regular time for our students. We recommend two hours per week, but I will tell you that um, not all students require two hours a week. I have one that she takes a half an hour to an hour. Um, but some students do require two hours per week. Our director pretty much limits it to there, but it, it's, a good, it's a good thing to try to make them um, meet with you regularly. Um, I also try to schedule the, the time that I meet with my students around in-office checks because we find that helping them prepare for an in-office check is a huge part of what an NEDP coach does. Um, I also set goals if needed. Um, I've had students, and you probably have two, that moved through the program at the speed of a glacier. And so you have to say, we're going to get these sections done by next week or whatever. Um, and a big thing is to be flexible. Um, and we know that these students don't have a high school diploma. They often had jobs that reflect the fact that they don't have a nice high school diploma. And they, they're the kinds of jobs where they don't get their schedule till the, the weekend before, or they're called in to do extra work. So it's, it's hard to schedule a regular time. So I try to be flexible with my students if um, I know that they're committed. Um, and you can tell which ones are committed and which ones are fooling around. But most of the time, most almost all of our students, I would say, are committed. Um, let's see, sorry. And then what kind of help can you give as a coach? Um, one of the things I do is I edit. Um, and as you know, the NEDP program has uh, spelling and grammar check embedded in it. <laughs> But, and you may all be able to relate to this, but I often have students from foreign country that aren't native English speakers that will type in an answer and ask me to look at it and I'll read it and I'll think, what are you trying to say? <laughs> so I'll ask them, what are you trying to say? And it's funny because they can often say, oh, I'm trying to say da 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 da. And then I say, okay, we're going to erase what you have in there and put what you just said, because that makes sense. Um, but anyway, discuss discussion. What are you trying to say? Let's look that up in the dictionary. Um, that, that kind of help you can give. Um, I, I try to focus the student. Um, and this is, this is pretty important. Did you answer the question? 
you can you can get pretty involved in things like the Emancipation Proclamation, and then write this wonderful paragraph and realize that you never actually answered the question. So focus, did you answer the question? Did you answer all parts of the question? And a big one is, is the answer from the resources. I'm sure you've all had students that um, they know the answers. I know the answers to all the health section. I don't need to read the resources. And some of the answers may even be correct. But as we know, if they're not from the resources, they're not correct. So you can save your student a lot of time by making sure that they take their um, answers from the resources. Um, I use discussion to help them formulate answers. There's not many students out there that know much about the Korean War or um, the conflict between France and Algeria or how to identify the climax of a movie. So sometimes we'll even um, look something up online and read about the Korean War or you know, read about um, Algeria or the scientific method so that I know they understand it. And it's if they understand it, it's much easier for them to formulate their own answers. And something else I do, which I find is really helpful, practice for in-office checks, especially the oral presentations. And then um, I also make up practice worksheets for some of the math in office checks. Um, for example, the one, the budget one where they have to calculate the percent for each category in a, in a household budget, and then they have to put it in a um, pie graph. There is a great tutorial on how to do that. And I encourage or require that my students watch it. But even I, after I watched it one time, I, I, I didn't know, I couldn't remember exactly the steps each time. So what I've done is I've looked at the, um, the, you know, the written portion of the NEDP and made up practice worksheets with another household budget using different numbers. And, and they you know, get to practice it, practice it in the, an Excel spreadsheet. And then it's easier for them to do it when it comes time for the in-office check. Um, Ellen, is there, are there any questions that I should? There was actually a question about um, the NEDP coach versus NEDP assessor role, but Emma went on to answer it to say that your assessors don't work as coaches. Right, okay, yeah, they're, they're totally, totally um, separate um, entities. Okay. Um, and, and I would say one of our biggest roles is cheerleading. Um, as you probably all know, the tasks have to be mastered to 100%. So students finish the um, health section, for example, that really long section. They're all excited, they submit it, and then it comes back with half or more that are not demonstrated. So that can be so demoralizing. But um, it's really helpful as a coach to point out the point section. You know, it may say not demonstrated, but out of 12 possible points, you got 11. So it's only one thing we have to fix. And that makes a huge difference because these are the kinds of students that often do get demoralized if, you know, they think they're work, they work so hard and then it doesn't seem to be paying off. Um, but anyway, I always make sure that um, all our coaches know about that section. Does everybody know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the points section? It's right on that NEDP page. If not, let me know. Um, and I do have to give you a personal story because this is why we do what we do. Um, this is our, our first graduate from our NEDP program. His name is Stanley. Um, and I'm on his right and his assessor, Lisa, is on his left. Stanley came to um, our program. He called our director before the pandemic and said he wanted to get a high school diploma, but he's legally blind. He has no vision in one eye and partial vision in the other eye. And so Emma comes to me because I was a, a special educator, um, although my experience was with uh, learning disabilities and developmental delays, not visually impaired. But I went online, I found out 
you know, how to enlarge print and we got them a, a keyboard for people with visual impairments and um, it was going great. He, he needed some math tutoring. He passed the tests, no problem. We got into the, um, to the program. He was, was, and probably still is technophobic. He hated the computer, didn't want to have anything to do with it. But he came in every week and we sat down side by side with the computer and, and uh, you know, I'd show him how to turn it on, how to plug in the, the mouse and the, the keyboard. And he, he, was, he was pretty good. He got, he got better and better. And we probably finished more than half of his program and then the pandemic hit. So now he has to do it from home and he has to share a screen. And um, luckily his wife was very, very supportive and he, he finished it. He, he um, not only did he finish it, but by the end of his, uh, you know, when he was doing his last um, packet, he could log on by himself. Um, he could share the screen by himself. He, he, was, he was doing great. Um, so anyway, here's a guy with a serious um, uh, handicap um, during a global pandemic and he's technophobic and he gets his high school diploma. So we're really, really proud that, uh, that, that Stanley did that. We're also really proud that he's our first graduate. And I have to tell you one other little thing. We invited him into the office um, because he was our first graduate so that we could give him his high school diploma. And um, he said, to Emma, our director, it, he asked her if she would make a copy of his diploma. And the reason he wanted a copy is to give it to his mother because he's the first person in his family to ever get a high school diploma. So anyway, that's why we do what we do. <laughs> Yay, Stanley. Okay, um, here's another helpful hint. We, um, and, and I did it and, and Emma, our director did it, but we have copies both in print and online of all the resources for coaches to refer to and to help them prepare for their student. So if you're, and we use volunteers as well as paid staff to be coaches. Um, so if we have a new coach and they know they're gonna be working on disaster preparedness or colon cancer, they can either go online and find those resources that, that are attached to the NEDP, or we have paper copies of most of them in the library, and they can read up on it to help them uh, prepare their student for uh, you know, work, doing the work in that particular se uh, section. It's a huge help um, to have that stuff. Um, of course, it's attached. You can see it when you're working with your student, but it is nice to have it in, you know, either in print or in online to look at at different times. Um, and our, our my last slide is now that we have our own program, we do have some communication between our coaches and assessors, which has been really nice. Um, we didn't have that when it, when we were working with HCC, um, and, and not not to say anything bad about it, it, it just didn't happen. It just wasn't the way things worked. But now we have our own NEDP program, and we're better able to communicate with our students' assessors. And they often just send an email saying they met with their client and that he he worked very hard, but he's going to need more help in rounding. Man, that that's a huge help. Okay. Now I know how to help them. Um, but all that being said, we do consider our students are adults and they need to advocate for themselves. So um, most of the time, if there's going to be communication, we encourage our students to do it. There was one example where I, I, um, I did um, get a little involved with the assessor and it was about Stanley and his vision problems. He did, uh, I don't remember, I think it was the cover letter and um, he had uh, extra spaces between some of the words and um, the assessor passed him, but the second grader did not because of those spaces. And the assessor asked him, do you, know, do you see anything wrong? Do you see any extra spaces? 
and he didn't. So she helped us out by putting a note to the, the second grader that said he's visually impaired. He can't see those um, extra spaces. And so then he was he was demonstrated in that area. So anyway, that, that's the kind really the only kind of communication that gets involved. For the most part, we want our students to communicate with their their assessor. So that's all I have. Um, how about you guys? Do you have any um, questions for me? We see one question that coaches don't have access to acceptable answers. No, we don't have answers. We don't have access to the answers. That's the assessor's job. But we're coaches, we're teachers. You know, we can read the, the resources. We can read the questions. We can focus our student to say, you know, what is this question asking? Um, and then go back to the resource to make sure that they understand that they're answering the question. Um, and you're right, we, as a coach, we do not have any access to the, the, what the answers are. That's only the assessors. Um, a question about, are all of your coaches volunteers or are some paid instructors? Most of them are paid. We have a few um, volunteers. Um, but yeah, they, whoever wants to do it, um, and, and I have a little, it's similar to this, the little training that I do with, with anybody that wants to be a coach so they understand how the program works. And um, anyway, it, it's my passion. It's my favorite thing to do is to coach um, NEDP students. And I think a lot of our, our volunteers and our staff really enjoy it also. So that actually brings up a question that I have, and then there's one other one in the chat box. But Carolyn, what kind of training do the coaches go through? Um, well, it's kind of very similar to what I just just did, but I, we explain the program um, and and talk about the kinds of things I just talked about. And um, I usually check in with them once a month or so to see how things are going and if they need any help. Um, and uh, but we do, we do train them for similar to what I just did. Mm -hmm. And then a question in the chat box, how do the coaches access the resources? Well, they are on the student's NEDP um, page. So if you're meeting with a student um, visual, uh, virtually, they, they open up their NEDP and they share the screen. And then if they click on it, you see the resource. Um, so we, we and we have the resources all printed out and in an electronic file that um, we use. And all those resources are, are you know, public. They're, they're not like specific things that, um, that are not allowed to be um, distributed. So, um, and, and they're, it's really helpful to have that, especially since well, that's where you have to get the answers. But... And then another question about how do we become a coach if they're at a different location? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I, I suppose it's if your, does your program have an NEDP program um, that, I mean, our director uses, um, well, I, I really shouldn't, I don't know about the money, but she, she, she uses tutorial um, funds to pay for um, us to do our, the coaching. So. Um, if you wanted to be a coach in our program, um, contact me or Emma. Um, you know, I don't see any reason if we're doing it all virtually why we can't do that. Although I'm not the director, so I will not, um, <laughs> I'm not going to make any promises. I'm the intake assessment specialist, not, not the director. But it's, it's, fun, it's a really fun thing. And we find it's really, really um, helpful. And, and there's a lot of students that, um, may not have finished if, if they hadn't had a coach to, to cheer them all the way on. Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of research and I'm sure within our audience, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence of, of the fact that coaches do make a difference. Academic coaches really yeah. make a difference for student success. Okay. And I have to apologize for the dog barking. My husband was supposed to keep him in the basement, but he failed. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so anyway. <laughs> Um, Carolyn, would you mind putting your email address or your contact information, best contact sure. information um, in the chat box? And as you're doing that, um, I'm just going to remind everyone that because everything is recorded, we will have the recordings and any presenter materials available on the VTI website in early January. Uh, the other thing I'd like to remind you of is if you're looking for proof of participation for your sessions this week, we are going to take care of that at the end of the week. We are going to place the link on the virtual training website, and we will also email it out to all of, all of the participants. So thank you so much, Carolyn. I think this is a wonderful presentation. I'm so glad that you shared it with a larger community. I know that coaching does work. So thank you so much for not only your presentation, but your dedication to our learners.